A very warm good afternoon to all of you and today I will be again resuming the lecture series which I started and uh, you know previously I have already discussed about Geoffrey Chaucer's Canterbury Tales and few of his minor works and I have discussed the characters of the Canterbury Tales given a brief outline about that and today I'll be discussing about the Cha uh, Chaucer's contemporaries and the works they have written uh, you just have to remember the name of the works and uh, so uh, firstly we should start with you know John Gover who was you know born in 1330 and who died in 1408 and his uh, three major works are Speculum Medentis written in French and then we have Vox Clementis written in uh, Latin which is called Voice Calling to Account and then we have Confessio Amentis, which is written in English, uh, written in 1386, and it is called Lover's Confession. And the meter, if I talk about the meters of the, uh, all the three works, they were written in octosyllabic couplets. So whenever I am mentioning about the, you know, meter, suppose if I said octosyllabic couplets, then try to uh, ensure that, you know, that you are searching for the octosyllabic couplet on the Google and you are searching for it and you are making a sm small note uh, wherever it is mentioned okay so I have done the same thing in my you know notebook wherever I have made the notes so I have mentioned about the octosyllabic couplets maybe you can uh, make use of the colorful papers and you can j jot down in a small note that what is an octosyllabic couplet is okay and then uh, Gower's Confessio Mantis in 1483 was written after 83 years after the Chaucer's death. So this is a very great way to learn the dates uh, that I mean remembering the you know death of a Chaucer year is very very easy. So if you come back 83 years later Confancio Amantis was written and then it, it, it comes that to whom you know uh, all these three books were dedicated so it was all dedicated to King Henry VIII in 1532. It was Gover that Shakespeare respectfully turned for a source of Paracelsus in Prince of Tyre. Okay, so this is an, uh, good to know information that uh, Shakespeare uh, got the inspiration for Paracelsus, uh, Paris Prince of Tyre from Gover only. Okay, and then coming to the Confessio Mantis, subject is you know divinely comic and a mixture of pleasure and instruction. You will find both the elements of pleasure as well as instructions. So somehow Gower is trying to give instruction uh, to the reader. He uses broad idea of love including sexual love to reinforce rather than to undermine Christian morality. He does not want to impose the Christian morality uh, but he is more uh, you know associated with the sexual love and uh, he don't he want to reinforce it okay. And also, uh, just to know, uh, amans is equal to hopeful lover. Amans means one, a lover who is very much hopeful. Suppose a lover is there and, uh, you know, uh, uh, the references to the uh, hopeful lover we can find in uh, Astrophil and Stella, the sonnet sequence uh, written by Philip, Philip Sidney, okay? And he makes confession to genius, the priest of goddess Venus. Next, I'll talk. I'll be talking about the Vox Clementis. It is an apocalyptic poem of seven books, in praise of peace of fifty-five stanzas of rhyme royal. Okay, fifty-five stanzas are written in the rhyme royal, and the same rhyming pattern which was used by, and which was incorporated by Geoffrey Chaucer. Uh, so here also, don't forget to make the note of the rhyme royal and try to keep. Uh, revising about what is the rhyme royal, what is the stanza formation and what is the rhyming scheme. So this will you know uh, give you edge over the thing because if suppose uh, a poetry comes uh, and an unseen poetry come okay and uh, if and they ask you that uh, what is the stanza form of this particular poem then if you are aware that if suppose it is a rhyme royal then by looking at this structure you will be able to understand that it is a rhyme royal and you will be able to mark the answers okay and then we have so I have, uh, I'll just explain briefly about what is rhyme royal so I've done the same thing here I have made a small notes wherever it is required so several lines stanza form of 
iambic pentameter rhyming ab abb cc used for narrative poetry from chaucer's troilus and cressida to william morris okay so rhyme royal was firstly incorporated by jeffrey chaucer in uh, you know troilus and cressida and it has been used till william morris in the revision of confessio uh, amantis he removed the praise of king richard at his conclusion and dedicated the final version to henry of lancaster late henry iv this is a very good information that you know earlier he he wrote the uh, you know confessio in in the you know name of uh, king richard okay but later on we see that uh, he dedicated the final version to henry of lancaster who is called henry iv okay and there are eight books in confessio mentis based on eight seven deadly sins okay so i hope that you all are aware of the seven deadly sins so uh, so the seven deadly sins are pride envy anger sloth covetousness gluttony and lust and also the prologue to william shakespeare's parcels is partly based on gower's apollonius of tyre this is again a good to know information uh, which will be of great help to you and uh, also uh sir john mantville he is the ostensible author of the book of travels so during those times you know in the medieval period the uh, book of travels uh, was a very very important genre which was being written at that point of time and it it first appeared in 1357 in france it is supposed to be sir john mantville a knight who crossed the sea in 1322 the real author of the book is said to be uh, jehan de borgene borgene okay so you just have to know the name of the writer that uh, sir john mantville wrote the travels the book called travels okay and then we have thomas ockleve uh, who has you know who was uh, born in 1368 and died in 1450 okay and then uh, we have thomas lydgate he was known for moralistic and devotional work and a poet born in lydgate suffolk he was born in uh, you know uh, lydgate so that is the reason you know he he is called as uh you know john lydgate and then there is a one of one very important uh you know critique who has written about uh him that joseph ritson described him as voluminous prosaic and drivelling mock okay his only prose work is serpent of division is an account of his julius caesar okay so uh, uh john lydgate has written uh his only prose work which is called a serpent of division for his account of julius caesar and then his most important work complaint of black knight modeled on chaucer okay complaint of black knight is again modeled on the chaucer and uh, the book of duchess the temple of glass is indebted to the house of fame okay and allegoric uh, and also his longer works are uh, troy book which is which was written in 1412 and then it was completed in 1420 and uh, and then we have seas of the base a pseudo canterbury tale translated from french version of prose called roman the tribes okay and the pilgrimage of man translated from degueville in octosyllabic couplets okay and uh, then we have you know thomas ockleaf uh, who was born in 1368 and then he died in 1450 his earliest detailed poem of a translation of christian the prince la epistor as reord more appeared in 1402 as the little of cupid so uh, if you you know uh, if you uh, if i see you uh, if i in a look at the my notes so i i can see that i have made the shape of the cupid and you know i have uh, drawn it there so that whenever if i will remember if i will see the picture of a cupid i will remember that the na- the vo- name of the work was also cupid okay and his poem la mail regal 1406 the mail reg- regnum present a vivid picture of the delights of bachelor's evening okay it shows about the how, that how a bachelor you know spend his evening okay and in, in then 1411 he produced regiment of princes or the d regiment principum and then we have stephen hobbes uh, born in 1474 and then died in 1511 served king henry 7th of england and was a follower of the devotional poet john lydgate so john lydgate was coming under the category of 
you know, devotional poet. And Horace Mann's work is Pastime of Pleasure, a chief theme of which was education and pilgrimage. So it might be asked that uh, who has written the uh, Pastime of Pleasure and what was the theme of that particular poem. So it was education and pilgrimage. It was printed by Winken the Word, sub subtitled Histories of Granite Amor, allegorical poem, and it is in decasyllabic couplets. And then we have Sir Thomas Mallory. Uh, the, the, he has given the title uh, to the cycle of Arthurian legends by Thomas Mallory, printed by William Caxton in 1485. So in 1485, Thomas Mallory actually uh, printed, uh, sorry, uh, the Arthurian legends uh, written by Thomas Mallory was printed by Thomas uh, William Caxton in 1485. Okay. And then uh, I think uh, that's all for today. And uh, further, we will be discussing about the age of the revival and these notes has been prepared from uh, different sources as I have already mentioned so it's just that you need to revise it uh, on the regular basis and uh, definitely uh, once we will start doing uh, completing the syllabus you will see that most of the questions uh, will be covered and uh, some point of time we will also start discussing the previous year question paper uh, and then we'll see that how uh, what kind of questions are being asked Okay, so I hope this works for you and uh, don't forget to like, subscribe and share my, you know, uh, video and the, uh, also if you can recommend my channel to the uh, students, those who uh, cannot afford the tuitions or the coaching fees, definitely it will be of great help. Thank you so much.